Unfortunately, it is not possible to export a lot directly from Final Cut Pro. But there is a simple solution to this problem. The solution I'm about to show you is completely free and works every time, as long as you don't make a very common mistake. Because this will break your lot, but we will talk about it when we get there. The software you need is called IWLTBAP Lot Generator. Don't worry, I put a link in the video description. You can download this application for free by typing in a zero here. But if you find it useful or you end up using this app on a regular basis, I'd encourage you to donate a few bucks. After downloading, you receive this zip file. Double click to unzip it. Then go into the folder. Here you can find various guides, but we are looking for the Lot Generator Mac. Go into this folder. And here you can find the DMG. Right click the DMG and select open. Then you have the IWLT BAP LUT generator. You can launch it directly from here. Just right click and select open and then open. Or let's quit this app. You can also move it into your applications folder. But I already have it in here, so I don't do this. Now I can go to my applications and launch the LUT generator. The first thing we need to do is to generate a halt file. But before we do that, let's go into preferences and make sure the LUT size is set to 64 points. If that's the case, we can close it and generate a halt. I will put it into this LUT demonstration folder. And it's done. Before moving on, I strongly recommend that we try to understand what we're doing. However, if you don't care about it, you can skip to the easy part. It's linked in the video chapters. Basically, a LUT is just a three-dimensional table. For example, here I have one of my EOS Alpha LUTs. Let's right click open with text edit. And as you can see, let's make this a little bit bigger here. Inside the LUT, you just have a table with three columns containing a bunch of color values. And by a bunch, I mean a bunch. But we will get there in just a second. However, I think this representation is not very intuitive. So let's use a proper app to have a look at this LUT. I will just move the text edit to the side and open this LUT with Lattice. When opening this LUT, Lattice gives me a little representation of what the LUT is doing, but we are interested in the cube representation. So let's go in here. Again, I make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see what's going on. Now, as discussed before, a LUT is three-dimensional. And as you can see, we have three dimensions because we need a blue dimension, a red dimension, and a green dimension. So in this direction, this is the green dimension, from a very dark green to a fully saturated green. This dimension is the blue dimension, from a very dark blue to a fully saturated blue. And this dimension is the red dimension, from a very dark red to a fully saturated red. Every color you can imagine can be described as a mixture of the shades of these three primary colors. In the LUT file itself, each of these points is described as a series of three numbers, because to find a place in a 3D space, you need three coordinates, a width, a depth, and a height. In the LUT, this is red, green, and blue. Let's think about this one more time. For example, this point here. You can see that red is zero, green is zero, and blue is zero. Let's get rid of my drawings. If we open up the LUT in the text edit, you can see, sure enough, this point exists. Zero, zero, zero. Now let's go back to Lattice. I will rotate the cube and we have a look at this point. As you can see here, this point is white. This means green is at one, blue is at one, and red is at one. Again, if we have a look at the text edit file, we can find this very point at the bottom of the LUT. One, one, one. This means red is one, green is one, and blue is one. If all of the primary colors are fully saturated, this means we get white. So far, so good. If you did not understand this section, please rewatch it. Moving on. Before we generated the heart, we made sure the LUT size is set to 64 points. This just means we have 64 points per dimension. Remember, a LUT is just a lookup table that stores individual color values. To know how many color values are stored inside the LUT, we can just cube 64 or multiply it three times because we have three dimensions with 64 points each. Calculating this number, we get 262,144 color values. You still with me? It's not too late to skip to the easy part. Okay then. A halt is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional LUT, 
which means it must contain all of these color values. With the LUT size set to 64 points, we just calculated that we need 262,144 individual color values. Now let's have a look at the hard file. To get some more information about this file, I'll open it with preview and hit the eye icon. You can see we have an image size of 512 by 512 pixels. If we multiply 512 by 512, or just squared, we sure enough get 262,144. This means the hard file is just like a spreadsheet full of color values. Each pixel stores an individual color value. But instead of storing these color values in a three-dimensional table, they are stored in this trippy image. Each pixel corresponds to a unique color value. Okay, now we need to bring this hard file into Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, I create a new project and I call this load hard. Now we need to make sure we set up the project correctly. So we need to change this to custom and type in 512 by 512. We can leave everything else as is. Now I go into this project, go to my folder and drag this hard into the project like so. Then we need to copy and paste the color grade we want to turn into a LUT by applying it to this image. But this is where things usually go wrong. Since this image is just like a little spreadsheet, we need to make sure the color values are not corrupted. To get the proper color values of your color grade, you must get rid of any adjustments that do not produce universally true color values. Because remember, a LUT file is just a table containing color values. Adjustments that do not produce universally true color values are for example grain, sharpening, bloom, halation or any other visual effects. Furthermore, you must get rid of any local adjustments like masks, gradients and vignettes. Again, think about this image like a spreadsheet. Having a gradient mask on top of a spreadsheet doesn't mean anything and doesn't make any sense. You just cook the integrity of your data. So you need to get rid of these adjustments as well. But now let's actually do this. I go into my other project and press Command C to copy this. Now I go back to my whole project and press Shift, Command and V to paste the attributes. As just discussed, we need to get rid of any adjustments that do not produce universally true color values. So we must get rid of sharpen, shape light, and I don't see anything else just yet. Also, make sure you don't paste any of these attributes like transform, position, rotation, scale, anchor, crop, distort, spatial conform, or compositing. Again, you can probably rotate a spreadsheet, but this doesn't mean anything. So we don't need these values. For now, Let's paste this. Now I get rid of the browser and we have a look at the inspector. This is just an exposure and contrast adjustment. This is a little refined contrast, color balance, my skin tone adjustment and a desaturation. In here, I have the Hansa Pro with a color space transformation and a 2383 film emulation. Let's make sure nothing else is applied. Okay, this looks good. I can hide this one and then we need to move on to the other instance of the Hansa I have applied. Because here you can see I have grain, halation and bloom. As we just discussed, these settings don't work globally, they work locally. And if I zoom in here, you can see that we really cook the integrity of our data. So let's disable the film grain, everything is much cleaner now. Assuming this makes its way through YouTube compression. We also need to get rid of the halation and the bloom. Since there is nothing else going on here, I will just delete this instance altogether. Let's zoom out again. In my signal chain, I also have two false color views, one for neutrals and one for the skin tones. To not risk anything, I will delete them too. Again, I make sure that the blend mode is set to normal, the opacity is at 100, so basically everything down here needs to be at its default state. To not risk anything, you could disable all of this. The only thing left to do now is to turn this halt file into a proper LUT. To do this, we need to export it from Final Cut Pro first. So I go up here into the share menu and select save current frame. Then I go into the settings and make sure I export it as a PNG image. And then I save it to my desktop and into my LUT demonstration folder. Then let's call it loaded halt and here we go. If we have a look at this image, you can see that this is the neutral halt and this is our loaded halt. To turn this halt file into LUT, we need to go back to the LUT generator and select convert to cube. Now I will choose my loaded hold and open this. 
After a little while, the LUT generator has generated the LUT. Okay, let's test whether everything worked out. I go back into Final Cut, open the browser and go into this project here. Now I duplicate this clip and get rid of all of these adjustments, like so. Now I close the browser so we have a little more real estate and now I choose the custom LUT effect. I apply it to the clip and load the LUT we just created. So I select choose custom LUT and go to the desktop and choose the loaded halt.cube. By the way, you can of course rename your LUT, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's leave it at that. So I'll select the loaded halt.cube and open it. As you can see, everything looks pretty good, but if we directly compare it to the other shot, you can see that everything is a little bit more contrasty and a little bit darker overall. But remember, we needed to get rid of visual effects like bloom, ventilation, and also my masks where I shaped the light and drew a little vignette. So this means these local adjustments are missing. This is neither the fault of the LUT generator nor the LUT. This is just how things work. As we discussed, we needed to get rid of all the local adjustments and I shaped the light with gradients and vignettes quite a bit in my actual color grade. But these local adjustments just can't be stored in a LUT. This is why it is so hard to make good LUTs because LUTs need to be very, very generalized so they work on different kinds of footage. But let's not get into this topic. If you have a general color grade you want to preview on your monitor and you need a LUT for this, this tool work just fine. Or if you have a general color grade you apply where no complex masking is at play, this tool will work just fine as well. It's just in this example I used masks and vignettes pretty extensively to shape the light and this is why we are seeing such a deviation. But again, making actual good solid LUTs is a science of its own. And this will go a little too deep for this video. Now that you can create your own LUTs, you need to know where to put them in the inspector because yes, the order matters. So watch this video next to avoid any crucial mistakes.